I'm Billy Foster, and I'm that iPad guy. Called that because I've almost always got an iPad with me, and in some cases, two. This is my little podcast for my friends and family to keep them updated on the tech world around us. And this week, I've been playing around in the clouds. <laughs> What is the cloud? Well, here's how I define the cloud for the general consumer. An online service that stores a copy of the local folder onto the internet, where when you make changes, they're sent up to the cloud. And then the cloud pushes out those changes to other computers that are connected to the cloud. And it allows you to view the content on the cloud from a browser or a mobile device. For example, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, Live Drive, Microsoft SkyDrive, Amazon Cloud Drive, or all what I consider consumer-level clouds. Unfortunately, Apple's own iCloud isn't there yet, and Box doesn't offer that to the personal market. So, Dropbox is by far the most commonly known service out there, and uh, of course I'm signed up and I've been recommending it to my friends, clients, and coworkers. However, I'm also going to start letting people know about LiveDrive. They offer the same type of service at a fraction of the price. Dropbox offers 5 gigabytes of free storage, with the ability to expand that to 18 gigabytes by spreading the word of Dropbox via referrals. After that, it's going to cost you $9.99 a month or $99 a year to step up to 50 gigabytes of storage, which breaks down to about $1.98 per gigabyte per year. Now, I was going to break down all the different services and how much they were and how much it cost per gigabyte, and then I came across LiveDrive. LiveDrive offers 2 terabytes of cloud storage for $15.95 a month, or $159.95 annually. However, if you take advantage of the current special like I did, then you can get the annual plan for $139.95, and that breaks down to about $0.07 cents per gigabyte because 2 terabytes is 2,048 gigabytes, and that's perfect for me. So what I'll do is I'll use Dropbox for me to interface with my clients and LiveDrive to keep my client files backed up and universally organized across all my systems. It also allows me to share out files without needing something like you send it anymore. They do have a mobile app that seems to cover the basics things so far. Uh, I'll continue to keep you posted as to how it goes and if I keep it, which unless it fails miserably, I can't see how or why I would not keep this service. Alternatively, the other cloud that I've been playing around in is the Creative Cloud. At first, I was dead set against the idea of leasing software, and there's still a part of me that cringes at the thought that if I can't make a payment, that I get cut off, but I digress. Adobe does offer the option to purchase the CS suite of your choice through traditional methods. However, they really sweeten the deal by making you really want the Creative Cloud service. By paying to access the cloud, you get much more than just access to the application. You also get 20 gigabytes of storage for sharing. Again, think no longer needing to use something like you send it. And if you're like me and you have a tablet and a smartphone, they've got some really cool ways that they all work together. For example, I can start with Adobe Ideas on my iPad, sketch out some rough ideas of what I want to do for a logo, save it to the cloud, and then open it up on my computer and start finishing it up and polishing it for presentation. The same is supposed to be true with Adobe Prototype. I'm supposed to be able to sketch out a wireframe using the app, save it to the cloud, and then open it up and get the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. However, right now I'm stuck getting a proprietary file that I can't do anything with. So, not everything is hunky-dory in the cloud, but I think they're off to a really good start. So now you might be asking, what do you get in the Creative Cloud? You get access to just about everything that Adobe makes. CS6 version of Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, After Effects, InDesign, Dreamweaver, Flash, Audition, Acrobat, Fireworks, and coming soon, Photoshop Lightroom. The mobile apps unfortunately cost about 10 bucks each, $9.99, and I did pick up Photoshop Touch, Proto, and Ideas. And don't let the term cloud fool you. It doesn't mean that you have to have internet access to use the application. It does, however, mean that you'll need to get it from the internet. It works almost like a private app store where you have access to install whichever app you need. 
Yes, you'll need to connect to the internet every once in a while for it to verify your license, but it's nowhere near as painful as it used to be in what I will call traditional licensing. Here's an example. Before, when I bought uh, CS5, I got a download and I could install the suite on two computers. And only two computers. Now, however, I have the cloud access on a few different computers and the software I require is different on the different systems installed. So I only use one at a time and I have it living on different computers as long as they aren't all running at once. Much nicer for my situation where I have a computer that I use designing and coding and another that I do production on and I don't need a separate license anymore. Also, Adobe says that people using the cloud won't have to wait for major revisions to get, or they won't have to wait for the next major revision to get new features that they're developing. Uh, I'll still have to chalk this one up to I'll see it uh, when I believe it kind of thing because I don't want them to make us all beta testers, but we'll see how that all works out. The Creative Cloud does, does not come cheap. It's $50 a month. However, when you consider that buying the Master Suite would cost you $2,599 plus tax, the $600 a year in monthly payments does not seem so bad. Granted, not everyone is going to need access to all of the different Adobe application, but it's nice to know that if you want to try it, it's there, and it doesn't cost you any more money. I will say that because I was already an Adobe CS customer, I was able to get the more reasonable $29.99 rate and I'm hoping that that's what's going to be the end price when everything all works out. Don't worry, I plan on doing podcasts that cover each of these apps and the benefits. This was just an intro to some of the cool things that we'll be talking about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Did I do that?